Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here. The lab coat's on back order, and first things first, I have to apologize. These code cards don't work. All right, so what I was doing this past Sunday was selecting the winners of the question of the day I gave in last week's Fates Collide pre-release video that went up on Wednesday, and I was uh, sending messages out, giving the code cards out to the random selected comments. And these are actually a few codes that were gifted to me by other players from the Pokemon League I go to. So I decided to try putting these in, and I understood that the codes were supposed to be redeemable the day of the pre-release, just the packs themselves were going to be locked and unable to be opened. However, as it turns out, the only codes that can currently be redeemed and the pack remains closed is the uh, code that comes in the 22 card pack. The individual booster packs, for some reason, they're all reading as invalid code when you try to put them into TCG Online. Now, I'm expecting and I'm hoping that that's just until the set releases on May 4th, which is this Wednesday. So, for anyone out there that I have sent the code to, if you get invalid code, don't fret. I'm, like I say, I'm hoping they're going to be valid on uh, Wednesday when maybe an update happens to TCG Online. Because something I've been forgetting to mention in the uh, past couple videos, as I say, I now want to mention the winner of the code cards from these giveaways that I do. And I also want to read off the comment and everything. One of the things that I want to do that for, one of the reasons, is for transparency's sake, because although no one has accused me of this or anything, but there's always maybe a thought in somebody's head that this could be a thing, I can easily say, I'm going to give a code card out, and I'm going to, you know, you guys leave comments and boost up my views and stuff like that. And there is the fact that, you know, if I was a nasty person, I could just be getting these comments and just not give out a code. Now, of course, I'm not doing that. I am giving stuff out, and for, like I say, transparency's sake, I thought mentioning the name of the person and reading their comment is actually just proving to any new viewers out there that I am, you know, true to my word. I'm giving these codes out. I don't have, like, you know, I have use for codes, but I actually have more fun knowing that I'm giving something back to the viewers who are supporting me in the channel. So, for transparency's sake, I was hoping to give these codes out immediately. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case because they are invalid for the time being. But as I say, hopefully, with for all of us concerned, our code cards will be redeemable on the... Uh, May 4th, Wednesday this coming week, and we'll have to go from there and see if it is. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting that's what's going to happen, though. Anyways, alright, so with that apology out of the way, I will get to the reading of the names of who won for the codes last week. But first of all, I do want to mention that, of course, as usual, I've got a random booster pack. This one's going to be Primal Clash. I'll be opening this towards the end of the video. And the code card, of course, will be going to a viewer who participates in this week's question of the day. But in addition to this... We have broken 600 subscribers. Yes! So what I'm going to be doing is doing an unboxing, finally, although about a month late, of the Jirachi Mythical Pokemon Collection. Now, of course, this one has a code card as well. And as we learned from the Mew Pack on, on January, in January, that there's a code card that comes in this that unlocks everything you see here, except the pin. You actually get some cool card sleeves online, though. So I'm going to have a code card from the Primal Clash Pack, a code card from the Mythical Pokemon Collection Jirachi, and both of those codes are going to go out to people who participate in the question of the day, random drawing on May 8th, which is this coming Sunday. So I'm really excited for this one because I'm working on a deck that you might have seen in one of the online videos featuring Ho-Oh EX, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it relies on a couple other Pokemon. First of all, Parasect to get the energy out from colorful spores. It relies on Golduck Break to maneuver the energy around onto Ho-Oh EX. This also relies on Paris to get your Parasect in play. In all the packs I've opened and everyone I've asked about these cards, no one else seems to have a Paris. That is my only one that I have. However, in the Generations packs, there are Paris. And I'm hoping and I'm hyped up to see if I can actually get one, possibly two Paris. I need two to complete that deck. And hopes are riding high that I'm going to get them out of these packs in this Mythical Pokemon collection. So, that's going to unbox towards the end of the video as well. But first, there is a good amount of news to get through. Now, as I say, I'm going to be reading off the winner of the question of the day from last week's news update video thingy, and reading the comment. And for the Phantom Forces pack from last week, the winner was a viewer by the name of Daniel Kelly. The question was, what would be your ideal way to spend your birthday? Because, of course, it was all about the birthday hype for myself last week. So, Daniel Kelly says he would probably buy some packs of Pokemon cards and then have a Nerf War. That all sounds awesome. And I actually commented and suggested, you know what you could actually do? In place of the coin flip of the Pokemon match, have the Nerf War, and then the winner chooses who goes first. A big, long, drawn-out sort of a coin flip, but that would be a fun way to incorporate the two together. 
So congratulations to Daniel Kelly for winning the Phantom Forces pack from last Monday. Now we have the eight winners of the code cards that many of which are currently invalid. The only one that actually, like I said, could be redeemed is the 22 card pack. And the 22 card pack, I'm not going to actually read every single comment here because there's eight people to get through. Feel free to go back and check out the Fates Collide expansion, or sorry, Fates Collide pre-release video and read the comments for yourself and see, you know, why people like the cards. A lot of people were focusing on the Alakazam EX or Mega Evolution. Umbreon EX was a front runner as well. And various reasons for gameplay ability, the card art, or just the fact that it was their favorite Pokemon. So, the winner of the pre-release 22 card pack was Rhino. And for the seven booster pack code cards that I opened up, the winners were Classy Jaggle, Berserk Beavers, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Emilia Kaimantite, I hope I said that right, and Dual Wielden, Pedro Henrique, Unknown Spike, and Little. Now, Pedro and Little, I actually haven't gotten your contact information yet, because as I've said in many videos and comments and such, YouTube is pretty weird with sending the uh, direct messages, and I want to send direct messages with the code cards, or the codes, to the viewers so that nobody else can see it. Like, I could just put it in a comment, but chances are somebody could just come to the video, see that code. I'm going to take that for myself. That's why I like doing the direct messaging, so that way the code goes to just the person that received it. So, yes, Pedro and... I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Lidhill? Something like that. Anyway, uh, you two gentlemen there, or ladies, I'm not sure, just leave me a comment and let me know how I can contact you otherwise, you know, other than YouTube and possibly an email. Like, you can go to my About tab on my channel page and my email is right there. You can also message me on Twitter under Professor Chaz and I can work towards getting these codes to you so that Wednesday you can redeem them to get your first 10 card booster pack of Fates Collide. Alright, so those are the winners of the giveaways. Just to give you an update on what's coming up for the channel this week, um, it's going to be the usual schedule for the most part. Tomorrow will be our first episode of Pokemon Blue for the week in which we try to get through Pokemon Mansion. It is more annoying than I remembered, and I actually haven't played it yet. I've been waiting until tonight, Monday, as I'm recording this, to actually get Tuesday's episode recorded. And what I'm trying to do this week is, normally what, you'll, what I'll do is, on Sunday, I will, like, you know, play the three episodes of Pokemon Blue back-to-back, -back, and I find when I do that, I have decent commentary for the first episode, maybe the first episode and a half, but then I just devolve into reading what's on screen. And I don't think that, I don't know if it's really interesting for you guys to watch that, and I'm hoping I'm going to like sort of break it up a little bit. I'll play one episode tonight, record it for tomorrow's upload, and I'll wait till later in the week to record the other episodes as well, just to see if I feel more comfortable with that. Because what I like to do is get as much stuff recorded as I can at one time, and then just space out the uploads throughout the week. That's why you probably notice in a lot of the intros every single week, I'll be wearing the same outfit. It's not because I'm a slob and I don't change my clothes. It's just that I set the camera up for the news update video and I record all the intros for the rest of the videos for the week. So I'm probably going to be, you know, you're going to see me actually switching outfits for like the week as I do the intro parts at different parts of the week. So anyway, Wednesday, what I'm hoping to do is get the first of our Fates Collide Pokemon TCG online matches recorded. I haven't decided what card I want to use yet because I haven't actually seen them all. But when I finally do get those cards up there and I get to see which one I want, possibly whatever I get out of my booster packs, or I usually throw a bunch of tokens and get 10 online packs as well, just to give me a nice assortment of the new cards to work with, I'll put together a quick deck strategy for the first Fates Collide online match and see what new card I can show off for the very first week, the very first day Fates Collide comes out. And of course, the rest of the week is going to be Thursday, another Pokemon Blue episode. Friday, Saturday will be the Omega Ruby Battles and the Team Builder, of course, and then Sunday, the final episode of Pokemon Blue for the week. Now, next Monday, it's not going to be a news update video per se. It's going to be one of my in-the-lab strategies, highlighting all the Fates Collide cards that I find interesting. Most notably, of course, Pokemon EX, Mega Evolutions, Break Evolutions, and Pokemon that have special abilities, new trainer cards, and there's some Pokemon that always show up that don't really have any of those, you know, uh, features to them. But, for example, Gengar from Breakthrough with the Creep Shell. Cards like that I want to highlight as well. They have a pretty awesome strategy if used right. So we're going to have a nice in-depth strategy video showing off a lot of the new Fates Collide cards. That's going to be Monday. And that is basically the channel update. Now, in Pokemon Shuffle news, there's a lot of stages and a lot of new things that have happened as well. First and foremost, new main stages and new special stages have been added to the entirety of Pokemon Shuffle. There is also now a special shop, which I think says appears for a limited time, and you can spend your jewels to get some pretty unique items. For example, for two jewels each, you can either get a 
No heart loss for one hour, so you can play as many stages as you want for the hour, you're not going to lose any of your hearts. And the other one is you can get plus six hearts added to your total, you can max out your hearts to ten instead of five, and they will recharge one heart every 15 minutes. And for two jewels, you get this option for a 24-hour period. So a full day's worth of so many more hearts. Spending your two jewels, you can play so much more shuffle if you've been having trouble with the limited heart, you know, recharging rate and stuff like that. Now, as far as special stages go, up until May 17th, Mew is available in the special stages. Now, there's a lot of other stages that are available ending on May 10th, and that is going to be next Tuesday. First and foremost, we have Dusk Noir. And, for the first time, Zygarde Complete Form, which I've been calling Perfect Form. don't know why Perfect Form comes to mind, but anyway, Zygarde Complete Form is available as well. In a timed battle, Azelf is available in the special stages. In an escalation battle, Latios is available. And I've mentioned escalation battles before. Every time you defeat Latios in this, the level of the stage increases by one. The higher the level, the higher the percentage you can capture Latios. So, of course, the better you do, the further you go and stuff, you get, you know, a better chance to catch, as I just said. But you also get certain uh, item require, item rewards, not requirements. Item rewards at hitting certain level marks in this stage. For example, at level 50, you'll get the Latiosite. So you can actually Mega Evolve Latios, and by then, you probably would have caught it because you might use a Great Ball and such. You can get the Mega Stone at level 50. Now, there is also another Pokemon Safari on the go. This one has Duskull, Dusclops, Pumpkaboo, Gorgeist, Zubat, Golbat, and Crobat. Now, the way the Safari works, you don't exactly know which of these Pokemon you're going to encounter every time you go into it, so you have to select the Pokemon that are in your collection that you think would have the best chance against these. So, we see a number of Ghost types, so a Dark Ghost type would be pretty good, and a couple of uh, Poison types through the Zubat-Crobat line, so something like Psychic or Ground would be good to go against them as well. Alright, so that is the Shuffle News. Now, we get into the heart of the news. So, uh, I guess this is all pretty good news. Anyways, this is Darkrai Month. That's right, the mythical Pokemon distributions are continuing, and May is the month of the Darkrai. So, for until May 1st until May 24th, if you go into uh, GameStop stores in the U.S., or in Canada, EB Game stores, you can pick up a code card that can input into your Gen 6 games of either X and Y, or Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire to download your very own Darkrai. Now, for those of you that don't live in the U.S. or Canada, you can go to Cerebi.net, and they have a nice breakdown of all the stores in various countries around the world where you can go pick up your own code. And I'm not going to give the information here because they've been nice enough to compile all this. I want to, like, send everyone to there to get the information because it's coming from them. I don't want to take their news and just, you know, spill it out here. So go to Cerebi.net if you don't live in the U.S. or Canada, and they have more information on which stores you can look at if your country does participate in this code card giveaway. So, Darkrai is coming at level 100, as all these, all these mythical Pokemon are. It does have, of course, the Bad Dreams ability. And the moveset is going to be Dark Void, Ominous Wind, Nightmare, and Faint Attack. And, of course, that first attack, Dark Void. Everyone loves Dark Void, don't they? Especially Smeargle. Anyways, so that is the moveset for this level 100 Darkrai. And also at the GameStop stores, you can, for a limited time, pick up the, well, I guess limited edition, 2-inch Darkrai figure or an 8-inch crushed velvet plushie of Darkrai. Also, for the time being, for a limited time, on Pokemon TV, which you can download the app for for your smartphones, there is Pokemon Rise of the Darkrai, the uh, feature film featuring Darkrai. That is available to view for now. And, of course, there is the Mythical Pokemon Collection Darkrai for the Pokemon TCG. Essentially, it is the same as this, as you can see here. You get your two generations booster packs, you get the foil promo Darkrai card, an online code card, plus the Darkrai pin as well. And what I'm hoping to do, I don't have it, obviously I don't have that pack just yet. I do want to pick up the collection and hang on to it for if I hit 700 subscribers, a nice another 100 mark of the subscriber count. If I hit 700 by the time that I have the Darkrai before the next uh, mythical plug, Mythical Pokemon Collection comes out. I'll be opening that on the channel for another code card giveaway. So look forward to that if we do hit the 700. Now, there is also in the Pokemon TCG a new X and Y Trainer Kit available. Trainer Kits are good for players that have not played the game yet and they want to sort of get into it. Because what these come with are two 30 card decks. So, kind of like a half game that you're going to be playing. But of course, these two 30 card decks can be combined into a single 60 card deck, which will then be playable against other players with the standard 60 card decks. 
And it also comes with two game booklets with step-by-step -step instructions on how to play card by card to help the new players understand when you can play certain cards and where they go and stuff like that. You also get the standard playmat with the instructions on the back. So the playmat shows where your cards go, like the deck, the prizes. Of course, the instructions just help you along the way what you can do. You also get your standard damage counters, condition markers, and the cool Pokemon flip coin for your coin flips. And you get a pretty cool uh, illustrated deck box, which I haven't seen yet, but it's neat that they actually give out a deck box with these as well. And, of course, you get the online code card to open all this on the Pokemon TCG online as well. So if you're looking to start Pokemon training with the TCG, that's actually a good place to start. I've always said theme decks are a good way too, but I suppose you would have to buy two separate theme decks to be able to battle them against each other. So the trainer kits are a pretty standard good way for you to get into. If you're not sure if you're interested in the card game, you can just see how it plays out using those smaller 30 card decks against each other. So that is, I believe, all the news updates that I have to give. And now it's time to get into opening the Primal Clash booster pack and finally, the Mythical Pokemon Collection Jirachi. And I didn't mention it, but as you can see, I still have the Charizard Collection back here as well. What I'm hoping to do with that, I'm going to hang on to this. And as much as I would like to find some Paris in these packs, I have to wait. I'm going to wait until if we hit 1,000 subscribers before the next pack or the new next collection comes out, which I don't know if it's going to be Blastoise or Venusaur or whichever. But if, this, if I have this by the time that I hit 1,000 subscribers, that's when I'm going to be doing this opening. And what I actually want to do is pick up another one of these or another one of the next Pokemon that comes out and actually do a mail-out giveaway. So if anyone's interested in something like that, feel free to share this channel, let people know that if you subscribe, the more I get, the higher we get to getting one of these packs actually mailed out to one lucky viewer who participates in whatever question of the day I have for that one. With all that being said, let's get right into these openings right now. I'm hyped to find Paris. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to be heartbroken if it doesn't. Let's begin. And as we prepare to bust into these packs, the Booster Pack and the Mythical Pokemon Collection Jirachi, I'm going to give you the question of the day, and for your chance to win one of the code cards from these packs I'm going to be opening up today, leave a comment down below and include hashtag QOTD as you answer the question that I'm about to give you. And on Sunday, May the 8th, I'm going to be doing the random drawing of everybody who uses that hashtag and answers the question, and two lucky commenters will receive one of these code cards. So the question of the day is in relation to the fact that I've been talking about wanting to attend a number of conventions this year, most notably Anna Maritime, which is coming up first in Fredericton, New Brunswick. It's one of my annual traditions I try to do as long as I have the money to do so. So, for the question of the day, do you have any annual vacation traditions yourself? Do you do something like maybe in the wintertime, maybe your family goes and does a special winter getaway? Do you have a summer vacation you guys always do as an annual sort of a thing? Just leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite sort of annual vacation tradition is. And again, use hashtag QOTD and you'll have a chance to win one of the two code cards we're getting here today. So let's get this out of the way first, because I want to save the Jirachi one for last. That's more of the, uh, the hype is built up more for that one. So, of the Primal Clash, first of all, let's make sure the code card is not given away in video. There we go. It's turned around the proper way. So, this is going to the side until Sunday, May the 8th. Now, do I need anything from Primal Clash? If I could find another one of those Swampert with the Diving Search, that would be pretty good. Another Dive Ball, actually. I forgot all about Dive Balls in this set. First of all, we have a Mudkip. You're almost a Swampert. We have a Sfeel. A Shroomish. I don't think we're perfectly in focus here. Zigzagoon. Come on, if you want to focus on that. You're going to make me touch the screen, aren't you? Alright, now we're focused. And last one is a Weedle. The Uncommons begin with Archie's Ace in the Hole. We have a Whiskash. We have a Kakuna. No Dive Ball yet, but the Reverse Foil card is a Rhyhorn. And the rare card of Primal Clash is going to be a Wall Rain. So, no Dive Ball, no Swampert, unfortunately, but the deck that I have for Swampert Slurpuff works pretty good as it is. Now is the time to break open the Jirachi box. And I've been waiting for this for, like I said, ever since I got it about a month ago. And I want to say thank you, everybody, for hitting 600 subscribers. First and foremost, I hope you enjoy the content that I upload. And as I try to tear this open, I just want to say thank you for finally allowing me to open this in the video. I mean... I would have opened it once I got the Dark Rye anyway, because that is the uh, Dark Rye would be the most recent one. But now we can finally get this all opened up nicely. Now, first of all, in here they have the little insert celebrating 20 years of Pokemon. It shows you all the collections that are coming out. So it looks like Blastoise might be the next one that might 
possibly take the place of the Charizard on my well, backdrop here. Venusaur and Pikachu are also going to be coming later on in the year as well. And there is, of course, all the mythical Pokemon themselves that will be coming in these two booster pack collection boxes. All right, and on the back, we have a nice group shot of all the mythical Pokemon. But let's get right into why we're here, checking out the collection itself. Now, first of all, this is the code card for the Jirachi collection box. Again, going to the side until Sunday, May the 8th. Here we see the Jirachi itself. It is a uh, metal type. 70 HP, and the Precognitive Dream for Metal Energy, draw three cards, this Pokemon is now asleep. That wouldn't be too bad if you use the All Night Party Stadium, or even just something to wake it back up like a Full Heal or a Pokemon Center Lady. But of course, the chances are that you'll wake up by the time you take your next turn, because you flip twice at the end of your turn, and then the end of the opponent's turn, and on a head you wake up, so it's only a 1 in 4 chance that you'd still be sleeping anyway. Iron Head for two colorless, does 30 times. Flip a coin until you get Tails, and this attack does 30 damage times the number of heads. Those are always risky because you can flip a single Tails and do no damage. But we're going to gently pop this out. There we go. We're going to set you back here, Jirachi, by the Charizard collection box. And we're going to take a look at the nice Jirachi pin. So now that it is springtime, I've switched over from my winter jacket to my jean jacket for the warmer weather. And I'm adding all of these pins onto it. And I've got quite a collection. I've got the Charizard, Mega Evolutions. I've got a bunch of... Uh, other Mega Evolutions, some Legendaries as well. And Jirachi is now going to join Mew and Celebi on, I think it's the left side of my coat. Alright, let's stand you, if you can stand up, back here. Now, let's take a look at these booster packs. I think we'll go in Pokedex number order. We'll open the Venusaur first. That being the Grass type, and Paris is a Grass type. I wonder if this is going to be a good luck for us. Now, the Generations packs... You might have noticed the standard booster packs. I know how to format the cards and arrange them so that I put the rares at the bottom. I don't really know how to do that with these because they have the Radiant Collection in here. And that kind of messes up the card order. So I'm going to do my best to try to save the rares and the foils for the last. But chances are it ain't going to happen. I'll just do my standard little shuffle around. So starting off we find... Ooh, a reverse foil psychic energy. I like that. I have a water energy from the generation, but not a foil version, so I'm going to definitely be using that in one of the decks. Here we see a Geodude. I have, ooh, fire energy too. It's not the foil, but it's got the cool stripy background of the generation's expansion. A Paris! Yes! All right. I really like this art as well, too, because it's got this cool looking spider web. I find it funny that Paris is hiding from the rain, because don't they have damp skin? Or dry skin, sorry, they should be healing in the rain. But I've got another Paris. Excellent. Thank you, Venusaur Pack. Here we have a Machop with a Knuckle Punch and a Boulder ready to hurl at your face. That's pretty cool. Next, we find an Energy Switch. Always a useful card. We have a Pokemon Center Lady. Always a useful card as well. We have a Shroomish. I like how some of the cards have a little jewel up in the corner here, too. So, Worry Seed. 10 damage. Flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Next we find a Frostlass, very cool, 90 HP, water type, ability drag along. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon and is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, flip a coin. If heads, the attacking Pokemon is knocked out. Definitely very good. It's almost like Destiny Bond in the video game. And Snowy Drop, if you can read that, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. Very good card, and it's got three jewels along the side just to show how awesome it is. The final card of the Generations Pack, number one, is going to be a Gyarados, 130 HP. Water Pokemon, and for a water and two colorless, Berserker Splash does 80. This attack does 10 damage to each bench Pokemon, both yours and your opponent's. You could actually put a Mr. Mime with Bench Barrier on your side to prevent your side's damage, but continue the damage on the opposing side. Now, Aqua Tail for water and three colorless, 90 plus. Flip a coin for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. 30 more damage for each heads. Not too bad. Definitely some good cards out of that pack. And there's one pack remaining. It is the Charizard. Will we get something as hot out of this pack as we get out of that one? Thanks to the flames of the Dragon Pokemon. If I could actually... There we go. Alright. So, again, we'll switch things around. So that means the foil should be at the top right here. So we're getting that out of the way immediately. The foil card, once we're focused is going to be a Team Flare Grunt. Discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Next, we find a Pikachu with Nuzzle and Quick Attack. Here is a Metal Energy. 
We have a Magikarp with Epic Splash. I still remember when my Pseudo Wudo knocked out a Magikarp with its own Epic Splash. That was epic indeed. And a Tangela, Absorb and Vine Whip. Here we have a Pokeball. You get flip a coin, if head, search your deck for any Pokemon. I'm not really a fan of the coin flip items like this, like the roller skates as well, because when you need them to work, generally they don't work. All right, here we have a Persian. Next is a Charmander. Now, this is an interesting card in the set, so playful for fire and colorless. 20 damage times, flip a coin, if heads, this attack does 20 damage times the number of damage counters on this Pokemon. So you could do a possible 120, but what's interesting is the Charizard that's in this set has an attack, I think it's called Recall. It says it can use an attack from any previous evolution under it. So a Charizard with a lot more HP could use the Playful. If you flip heads, you're doing a lot of damage if you've taken damage back. I think it's got like 130 total. So at 120, if you flip heads and do the damage, you're doing 240 back with Charizard's Playful. Alright, the next card is going to be an Altaria, part of the Radiant Collection. Flap for 20, and Fairy Friend 30+. plus. If you have any Fairy Pokemon on your bench, this is 30 more damage. The final card of the Generations Pack number 2 is a Dodrio, a good ability in Retreat Aid. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, your active Pokemon's Retreat Cost is 2 colorless less. So if you had two of them, you could even benefit each other's Retreat Cost as well. Fairy Attack, decent attack if you get the right flips. Flip 3 coins, 40 damage times the number of heads. So, that is the unboxing of the Jirachi Collection. And as I say, we got the Primal Clash code card, the Jirachi Mythical Collection code card as well. Both of these are going out to lucky viewers who participate in the question of the day, which is ending on May the 8th. The question is, do you have any annual vacation traditions? So leave your comment down below and answer to that, and use hashtag QOTD. You have a chance to win one of those code cards later this week. And I will say, as weird as it might sound, this was my favorite card I got. The Frostlass was cool, but just to make my deck work, the Ho-Oh deck, a little bit better, I am so happy I finally have a Paris with what I think is the cooler art. So with all that, we're going to end off today's episode of the news update and the unboxing. I want to say thank you for checking out the unboxing today. Good luck if you enter the question of the day to get those code cards. And come on back to the channel tomorrow as we try to get through Pokemon Mansion and Pokemon Blue. As I've said, I forgot how annoying that area is. But anyway, we're ending off the episode today. Thank you for checking it out once again, everybody, and I'll catch you next time.